it's always been an issue. So. Okay. So if if you want Keith to leave, I'll ask Keith nicely to leave. Um, if you don't want Keith to leave, then he can sit here and press, press on. And press on, and we'll we'll move on to the next stages. Uh, but I want to give you that opportunity first. But obviously everything's fearful. If you tell him to leave, and what I'm going to say is benign. And then he's gonna. We can pull him back in the room, like, "Hey, Keith, come back in. This, this is what, <laughs> this is what we talked about." Um, so, so there, that fear of him wigging out. Why, why is she trying to hide something from me? There is, if there's been help me. Yeah, there's no trick here. We're just yeah. trying to make sure that yeah, if there's control to talk, because you can't be to talk to us, truthfully. Are, are they're asking you, they're not asking me. Obviously, I, I would want to be here and whatever needs to come out. And you can change your mind in the future, too. If you but want no to change what, it, it's going to get up, so. Like I said in the beginning, you're free to go. So if you wanted to chat with them privately, that's fine, too. But we, we want can, to talk to you. And we can leave the room, give you guys the room for a couple minutes. Um, this next stage of things could be could be benign. Could be like, I, oh, I, we forgot to tell you this. Or, oh, yeah, all of these things make sense now. Um, this, I could tell you the puzzle that makes it all come together, or I can tell the puzzle that crashes everything apart. I don't know what that piece is, honestly. All I know is facts. All I know is certain specific items that will either tear the castle down or is going to build the castle up. And I don't want to, I don't want to build, tear the castle down, and not give you the ability to then fix your own castle, even if it's just a small thing here or it's the whole castle. I want you to be able to to choose that. Um, so we can step out of the room, let you guys talk, because I don't know what information I'm gonna do if it's life-changing news, or if it's, oh yeah, everything's fine. I just don't know what it is. Um, usually, right, we show the pictures because everybody's invested in this picture. Keith, do the drawings. Keith's the one who laid, gave this stuff. So Keith has always been a part of your memory for small details. Uh, and that's why Keith's been in here this whole time. <coughs> And that's why he makes me feel safe in you. Absolutely. Well, if he makes you feel safe too, we can Absolutely. continue on. Go I know you can, can change your mind. Absolutely. And again, I just don't know what the pieces are. So if I would say, hey, this is going to bring the whole world down, I'd tell you, it's not bring the whole world down. Mm -hmm. And then we need to talk, talk alone. Um, or I would suggest we talk alone. Um, but that's completely up to you guys because I don't know. Um, I just want to talk to you. Yeah. We'll be, we'll be right back. I don't want them to arrest her. Why? Because she saved my life. So you don't press her? They still need to find out who it is. No matter what happens, you think she just sits here? This comes out and they find out. It's over. Whatever happened is over. 
and it doesn't matter what you say, they're gonna have, the girl's gonna have trouble. So, you need to know the truth. You gotta know the truth. If you don't want to press charges, then that's up to you. You're not making sense to me. To the point where I'm getting scared now. So you don't need to. Tell me what's going on. Immediately. Yeah. Hopefully you've had a chance to chat briefly. The fears later, maybe. Nothing. Just answer the question. Nothing that we that I'll say to you. I won't eventually tell him if you yeah. know, if you want me to. Do you want me to just tell him what your fears are? We would love to hear what your fears are because <laughs> we want to be able to address them as best we can. <laughs> I think it's easier to control things once you know what the information is, to be honest with you. Sure. So the, I can tell you what it is, uh, say, say what it is when Keith leaves, and then you can say yes or no, whether or not you want him in there for the rest of it. For right now, he's just, yeah. am I in the room or am I out of the room? So that's the, yeah. and I'm, and I'm, I'm to the point where if you want him here, we'll just go on with the conversation. As like, long as you're not interrupting or you know, yeah. causing any I'll, I'll stay over here. <laughs> yeah. But if he steps out, I can say a name, and then you can choose whether you want you want him in here for the rest of it or not. It's completely up to you. Or I can just continue on and, again, like I said, I wanted you to always have control um, over certain aspects of stuff. We're not to a point where anybody's going to jail yet. We're not to a point of any anything like that. We're we're just still at the talking stage. We're at the control stage. Uh, you seem scared, Sherry. No, I'm not scared. What is it? When you don't answer, Sherry, it makes me concerned because I want to hear what your answers are and I want to be able to understand. The only way to control things is your breath, I know. I, I don't want you to find her. We're, we're not going to find her. She's the reason why I get to see my children every day. I agree, but we're not going to find her. She's the reason? What do you mean by that? She means the younger one, let her go. Right? Is that what you're referring to? Uh, we're not going to find her. Uh, and we can, we can just skip to, we can skip to the rock into the water and ruffle up the pond if we want to now. Again, the, this is your last offer. This, this is the last time if you want to do this alone or with Keith. Keith's been through this also on a different level. Um, so I'm I'm ready just to I'm ready to move on and, and throw the dart and throw the rock and see what happens with the water. But Sherry, look, look at me. What do you want? I don't want her to get in trouble. Okay. She's not going to get in trouble. So the DNA came back to James Reyes. Uh, your the house. DNA that was on you belongs to James Reyes. The picture and uh, can I get the picture? The picture of the table 
is James Ray's little brother who died recently. Um, he, we talked to him. We, he's been on a polygraph. We talked to everybody around him. We have the rental agreements, phone rental, the car rental agreements. We have, we have everything that says that he said he told the truth. That's James' brother, deceased Nick. So everything you've told us so many truths in this situation. The reason why you can describe the room is because you stayed in the room in the dark for hours, for days on end. The reason why you lost so much weight is because you stopped eating. The reason why you got a rash on your arm is because you cleaned his house. The reason why the brand is because he went to the store, bought the branding tools, and branded you. The reason why your nose was broke is because of a hockey stick. I know all of those things, and I know there was no sex. I know all of that because he passed a polygraph test that said it's not an abduction. She asked me to come to get her. No. I rented a car. No. I drove up and picked her up. He, he passed the polygraph test, Sherry. If that's not what happened, what did happen, Sherry? I don't know. No, there's no way. It's James. There's no way. There's no way. The DNA doesn't lie. His DNA is... His DNA was on you. His there's no way. Robert saw you in the house while you were down there. While everything He's spun Robert. out of control. His cousin. Why everything ran out of control <laughs> on the initial. There's no way. It's it's one hundred percent Robert's D or James's DNA. We even collected blonde hairs from the room. <laughs> There's no way it's James. There's no so, way. I'm telling you that it is. Why are you saying it's not James? <laughs> Why are you saying it's not? What's up? We were friends. Mm -hmm. There's no way. And he came and got you because you asked him. <laughs> no. When was the last time you had contact with James? His brother died. Brother died in 2017? <laughs> Is that right? I don't remember. Was it before or after the abduction? Before. Before. When was the last time you saw James? I don't know. Forever ago, when I lived in Southern California. So the last person-to-person -person contact you had with him was back in 2006? When you were living in Southern California? I don't know. So was it prior to your marriage? It's him. There is no way it's him. It is James. The DNA tells us that it, it was his well, DNA on you. The, the DNA alone says it's him. And when we talked to him, confronted him with the DNA, he told he, us what happened. He 100% told us what happened. He gave us details that nobody else would know. And we can call him, and we can all talk about it. But ultimately, can you look at me for a second? Ultimately, we put him on a polygraph like we did Keith. Keith was inconclusive to be honest with you, on whether he was involved or not. But 100%, James was telling the truth. The questions were, did Sherry ask you to come pick her up? He answered yes. That was the truth on a polygraph. We asked him, if the two of you ever had sex? The answer was no. During 2016. During 2016, during the abduction, he said no, that was the truth. We asked him if you asked him to brand, if you asked him to brand you, the answer was yes. And he passed the polygraph on all of those questions. He took us to the stores where he bought the chain. He taught, we talked to the friend who rented the car. The car that he rented drove over 900 miles in a day on the drop off point. Sure, I know this is a lot to take in. All but it's not the, like we don't know the answers to these questions. And the fear of fear of Keith's reaction, obviously now he's in the room, 
the fear of media, the fear of all of these things are coming, are coming forward, they're, they're in front of you now. Uh, the only way to get a hold of it, the only way for everybody to come together and heal, the whole community has to heal, is to, is for us to be able to say, when we, when we presented all of the evidence, all of the stuff that came forward, she, you told us the truth. You told us what happened. Because you did go in a dark room, that's true. You did slay in the back seat of a car, that's true. You did uh, lose weight, you were branded, your hair was cut. You did have bruises all over. But how those bruises got there are because you did it and James did some. The reason why your nose got broke is because you held the hockey stick to your face and he forced it into your nose. The reason why the brand is in a straight line is because he did it. He described exactly where it was. He told us exactly how he did it, where he did it, how he did it. Only you and I and maybe five other people know where the brand was. He told me immediately. Robert told friends and family you were there. His mom knew that you were there because of course it went news and everybody knew you guys dated. Everybody guys knew you guys had a relationship. So when it happened, of course, family reached out to him. He told him, yeah, she was here. But it said it hurt her. I didn't hurt her. So, what are you thinking, Sharon? That doesn't make any sense. Why doesn't it make sense? What actions doesn't make sense? A lot of it doesn't make sense. Can we talk about those? No. James' DNA was confirmed on your, on your clothing. The two of you haven't seen each other in over a decade. If you, you told me that you haven't been in his room, you haven't had contact with him in over 10 years, however... You just grabbed his bedroom to a T. And, this, and the DNA on you was still a vibrant piece of DNA. Ten-year-old DNA dies. The DNA that was there specifically was non-seminal fluid, was, was seminal fractions. You got that from his house somewhere. So whether it was the bed that you were sleeping on, where it was the couch, whether it was anywhere in there. <clears throat> when somebody would come to the door and be around the property, you would call James, James would call Robert, which is those two doors down. Robert would run people off the property. Robert told me all of that. James told me everything. So the only person that hasn't started telling us certain facts, there are certain facts that are true. When we were sitting there talking to James, there were so many truths that were a part of your story that it's hard to decipher the lies until we put it all together. Until he says, hey, why, how did you pick her up? I open up the passenger side seat, I open the door, you jumped in the back seat. Why'd you, why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? I don't know. It was weird. So, so are, you, are you calling James a liar? Do we not, are, are we not believing James what he told me? No. I know, I know you're scared. I cannot believe that it is James. I can't believe James told us the truth. That's what I can't believe. Uh, he passed a polygraph, Sherry. So did Keith. No, he didn't. He was a conclusive. And he was involved. So James is involved. So James is involved, but I don't... James what? picked you up. You called James to pick you up. You mailed him a letter with your address. You used a... No. You used a burner phone to call another burner phone for James to come and get you. You're saying since you're married, you haven't called James? No, I have called James. See, because earlier you said you had contacted James. Because phone records show that you do. You did. The phones don't lie. The DNA doesn't lie, Sherry. His polygraph doesn't lie. So we can, you can go his, a couple different directions now. His story. I've already told you lying to me is a crime. So you walk out the store telling lies, and that's a crime. I think we need my lawyer. This isn't making any sense. What's not making sense, Sherry? The parts that, that don't make sense. That it's James. 
Now, the parts that don't make sense are that you're accusing two females who abducted you when it was James. The part that you were branded, James did it. He told me he no. did it. Who, who would sit there and no. say, no. I branded her, branded Sherry on her right shoulder blade? Who does that? And told, told us how and showed us the letters that matched the brand. Took us to the store and pointed out the letters. The, the problem is today, today's the case is a result. Everything, the only things, well, how do we prove that you're telling us the truth? How do we prove that the, tr the, the truth is that two women took you, but I, I'm telling you it's a male. <laughs> The, the fact that you were branded is true. The small fact is that you willingly laid down and did it versus being tied to a table. So we could always, we could do the polygraph and try to, whatever parts are you're confused about. Can you go without that? Can I talk to you outside real quick? Can you do that um, late? That's fine. Yeah. The, the fears of how out of control everything got, the fear of all these things, is the reality. And the only people that can slow the train down is you and I. You, you put yourself through this so when you came forward you can tell certain stories. You missed. The, you couldn't control the DNA that we found. You couldn't control when we talked to James, he'd tell us what happened. story always was hard for anybody to understand. The tragedy that the community went through, the events that unfolded, the fear now of what, what it all means. But there's without a doubt, James's DNA was on you. I can the I cannot, no. The no. likelihood of being an ex-boyfriend is a problem. No. The, it's astronomical. Then you add in, when we go talk to people who never even heard of us, when we say, hey, what's going on here? They knew that you were at the house. All of them never came forward. No. No what? Do you want to call James? <laughs> this was a long road. I had no idea where it was going to take me. But right now, continuing and saying that two girls took you is a lie to Peter. It's just a lie. Because we were able to prove it with evidence. With a rental car agreement, person driving to a thousand miles in a day, the DNA on you and him passing a polygraph, it's, it's three legs to a three legs to the table and can stand up. Kate's going to wait out there. Now's your opportunity. Based on your reaction previously, what you're telling me is you did not call James and ask him to come get you? Is that what you're saying? Because if that's what you're saying, I have to understand that. There are things he says that we can corroborate, and whatever you say, we're going to try and corroborate. But right now, I'm not sure what you're saying. You're just saying you can't believe it's him. And you're saying you don't understand. But there are deals, details he provided. We know he, you were in his house. We collected hairs from that bedroom. That's going to have DNA on it. We already have your hairs that you left with your cell phone when you were picked up. So that's not going to lie either. The descriptions you provided are that room and that house to a T, except it's not a gravel driveway, and it's not elevated, and there's not two women who live there. But James lives there. James lives there. You know James lives there. So you might as well get it out of your head that James is not involved, because James is clearly involved, and James already told us he's the one that did the brain. That's something that he admitted to mayhem. 
he admitted to a felony, you could put him in prison. Over. So how would that, how do you, it doesn't just, it doesn't jive. So now it's your opportunity to say, were there issues between you and Keith? Is that why you needed to leave? I mean, we've read your text message. We're already aware of some issues, but enlighten us if that's the case. If there was a valid reason for you to leave, let me know what that was. James said you had your jaw broken by him, and that's why he came and got you, because you were in an abusive relationship. So, were you in an abusive relationship with him? Have you told other people in your life that, like China, that Keith has abused you in the past when that wasn't true? China told me that day two, where there was an incident at a party that you got hurt playing, like, I don't know, Wii or Pictionary or something, and then you told other friends that Keith hurt you. When there was witnesses at the party that said you just that you got hurt during a party, but then you go tell James that you were being hurt, you were being abused, and you couldn't come forward because Keith has friends in law enforcement. If all of that's is that true? Has Keith ever been abusive towards you? We are not talking about my husband. Okay. I love my husband. So why leave? Is James lying to us? <laughs> I don't want to leave my husband. I want to be with my children. I would never leave my children. But you, did, you did leave them permanently. You came back to them. Ultimately. <laughs> no. You left them every day at ditch daycare. So it's not like a... And James talked about that decision when you were driving down, how hard that was. You left at 10 o'clock knowing that Keith was going to get home late, knowing you were going to leave the kids at daycare, and how much that tore you up on the drive down. You told us that. Then things got out of control. James and I talked about that. We did talk about that before. When? When I went out of town for work. What happened? Oh, he's talking to other guys. Oh my God, why did I do that? Like when you were in Eureka, you give him a call? <laughs> Just start chatting with him? Told him some of your problems? And when did it turn from just chatting to his plan to get away? No. 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 You were getting all of Don and Mitski the night before. Why did I do that? We're trying to understand why you did that too. We're trying to understand all of it. I don't know. I don't know what tell this to them, but I'm because I was doing that. Doing this is awful choice. Talking to other guys that has got me here. <laughs> so are you what aspect are you saying? Like how how did how does talking to other people got you here? We've gotten I over love my husband and yeah. my husband and I made mistakes and I talked to other men that I shouldn't have. But but we took it a step farther this time. <laughs> this is a little different than just chatting with them. I I appreciate you talking and being forthright about the other guys you were talking to, when did it turn into something more? Obviously, you never would have imagined that CNN in 2020 and Good Morning America would care about you wanting to leave Keith or wanting to teach him a lesson no, or wanting to no, get him in line. No, I was just talking to engineers and you don't want to leave my husband. Right, I love how, my husband. How, how are you talking? How are you talking to James? I don't want to leave my how? husband. Sure. How are you talking to James? <laughs> on, on your on your cell phone or another cell phone? My work cell phone. My work cell phone. I don't want to leave my husband. I don't want to leave my husband. This is more like just a flirt. <laughs> What's your work cell phone number? Remember? What's that? I don't remember. How long were you guys talking? I don't know. Why would he have? Why would he rent a car and come and get you? I don't know. Well, if you don't know that, why would you get in the car 
and, and go down to Costa Mesa. Those are all things we can verify, Sherry. The car rental, the fuel, the mileage, the calls from you to him, the burner phone, all of that can be proven. I don't think you're a horrible person, Sherry. I think things went a little sideways on you. I, we, we started this conversation.